so uh today we're gonna be talking about one of my sleeper anime which is the daily life of the immortal king usually when creators make shows they only get to go wild and have fun and like after credit scenes or maybe an episode or two depending on if they need to throw filler in and slow down the pacing and shit but you can clearly see that's not the case in the daily life of the immortal king this show is goofy as hell like i love the comedy aspects of this show it made me laugh every single time you can tell that the writers and the animators had a blast with this show every episode is funny super ridiculous and i had as much fun watching it as they had creating it so let's talk about it spoiler warning if you haven't seen this show of course but let's get into it so you know how we do things around here we start off with the story and honestly the title says it all the daily life of the immortal king our title follows Wong Ling, the super overpowered ass nigga who wants to live a regular life. There's definitely a couple reasons why he's not no like rowdy, want to fight nigga. He could literally blow up the planet with very minimal effort, even with his power seal on that seals away a lot of his power. And two, he only really fights when the people that he loves are in danger. So throughout the show, we follow Wong Ling through his daily adventures. He's actually a regular high school kid sometimes. But man, when this nigga is not in school, bro, this nigga has one hell of a resume. This nigga Wong Ling then caught Pokemon, dueled alongside Kaiba and Yugi. Nah, I'm dead ass. Yeah. <laughs> he he actually did that shit. And I think he dueled Merrick. Like, it's a character that, that's based on Merrick in front of Weevil Underwood and Rex. If you haven't, if you can't tell already, this show has a lot of references. A lot. He demolished demon kings, created different worlds, manipulated time and space, scared the underworld into bringing his dead girlfriend back to life because of his sheer existence, and a bunch of other shit. There's a lot of moments in this show that I love, but I want to tell y'all about a few of my favorites. The first one is at the end of season three. So to lay out some groundwork for this, Wang Ling has basically domesticated and befriended this demon king called Froggy Two. But Froggy 2 rebels against him in this moment, and they're kind of like things are kind of ass in the demon world. So Froggy 2 just want to help out his people, and he thinks he like assumed that Wang Ling wouldn't allow it. He confronts him, and he know Wang Ling will like be his ass in the fight because he's done it before. Cause he he did it as a kid actually, so he was like, Nah, nigga, I don't want to fight. So we're gonna do this verbally. I'm a te I'm gonna quiz you. I'm going to ask you three questions. If you get these bitches right, then I'll just leave it alone. This part was funny as hell. Wang Ling accepted. Bro, he asked this nigga a question about astronomy and how long it takes, like, these three celestial bodies. You have to show the trajectory of their orbit. <laughs> and <laughs> instead of this nigga Wang Ling answering, this nigga Wang Ling pulls these what celestial the bodies man? closer to Earth and said knowledge oh takes practice God. and actually starts solving the problem in front of him for... This nigga Froggy 2 is fucking terrified. <laughs> he, he like, hey yo nigga, what the what the fuck are you doing, dog? Like, what the hell, boy? The second moment is a two on one. So <laughs> the it happens after this after his girl Soon Wrong gets killed by this crazy bitch that's had this vendetta against her for the longest. Bro, this man Wong Ling snapped and took a page out of Yusuke's book. What well, Yusuke say? He say, I don't, I don't care, care if she's a she's girl, a girl baby, or a grandma, I still knock her out. I'll still knock her out. Bro, he get to beating her ass. Nah, I mean, no mercy, absolutely crunching her shit. This nigga Froggy 2 tries to stop time and stop him so he can get himself under control again. This nigga Wong Ling breaks through time and makes that bitch with maximum efficiency. Like, gang. I did it all I could at this point. I know Froggy 2 over there. Like, bro, that's your problem now. So right before he kills her, he stops himself. And then he starts brainstorming ways to get Soon Wrong back. Bro, this nigga starts punching the ground and resetting the world over and over and over again <laughs> just to try to get her back to life. Meanwhile, while he's doing this, Sun Wrong's spirit arrives in the underworld to be judged, and the people down there ask her what her name was. She says Sun Wrong, and, then, and them niggas like damn near instantaneously are like, "Oh fuck, huh? bro!" The entire underworld starts shaking and trembling because Wong Ling is above, 
trying to create another world they creating like a whole parallel world just to bring her back to life folks this one nigga just say, yeah, bro, this is a dream. Send her ass back up immediately. He about to destroy everything in this bitch, dog. Please send her back up. But, but, but sir, that's against the, send her ass back up immediately, my nigga. You gotta be a pretty savage nigga to make fate changes, man, dog. They saw us one one lean girl for, and they said, honestly, never mind, dog. Uh, they dead ass didn't fuck with that. Dog is in the show had hella fun, man. You can tell by the references of how they feel, like how they feel comedy wise. And this show never takes itself too seriously. Hell, there's even an episode where they went into an actual animation studio. And that shit was pretty funny. They even got a whole episode of like them in a whole like JRPG or a dating sim game. Like I know these niggas be having a blast with this shit. Bro, niggas even made a graphics card joke that made my little computer nerd ass fucking chuckle. This show is made for my goofy ass gang. I ain't gonna lie, that's why I love this shit so much. Now let's move on to characters and character interactions. So, like I said, this nigga Wong Ling funny as hell, dog. Wong Ling be faking like he hurt. He be giving all the credit to that grandmaster nigga just so he can keep a low profile. He be chilling, bro. I definitely fuck with him. He's a pretty chill. He's a pretty chill nigga. He only cares about three things: Sun Wrong, friends and family. And them goddamn crispy noodles, but emphasis on them crispy noodles, dog. That's all this nigga eats. He had some shorty cook him a five-star meal in front of him, and he still chose them damn crispy noodles, folk. Also, it's a lot of times when he's unintentionally funny. Nigga got his own theme music, dog. And there's a bunch of funny-ass scenes with this nigga. The same girl that cooked him the meal was, like, trying to take Sun Wrong's family's sacred cudgel. They're trying to take the cudgel up to this, like, mountain to do some ritual or some shit. And he keeps on, like, she keeps on walking past this nigga, but this nigga keeps on appearing at the top of the staircase with his theme music playing for, like, when I watched this scene, for this shit was not supposed to be that funny, but you can tell the artists and the animators are some goofy shit, for because they do anything to make you laugh, and I think that's really cool, man. Wang Ling's character is amazing. I fuck with Wang Ling a lot. Soon Wrong is really cool too. She's she's great actually. She's not so typical damsel in distress type character. She's actually pretty strong herself. She grew up a child prodigy and she actually linked up with Wang Ling in the beginning because of his disinterest for her status, pretty much. She's a rich, popular girl, but we've actually seen that go away and we've seen her struggle financially and suffer hardships. You usually don't see of a like a character of her archetype. It's kind of cool that a comedy animator doesn't take itself serious at all is more than capable to express characters and actually take steps to develop them and show a lot of character within them and a lot of character progression. A lot of shows don't even bother to do some shit like that. Like that's some cool ass shit. Chin Chow's a meathead, hyperactive, super simp ass nigga dog. Like nah, nah, this nigga is insane. He was on some tier three sub bath water buying. What did you say about Pokemon ass nigga dog? He was in this girl chat tier three top sub top donations, top bits, most merch bought. He was fiending so hard. They took his shit away. They took his phone away and his computers away. You know what this nigga did dog? He went to the damn school computer lab dog. Is it that deep folk? Ain't no fucking way boy. You tweaking. Then we got go how which is this super smart hacker nigga who's really intelligent when it comes to a lot of shit. This nigga funny as hell. This nigga literally made a damn Glock Dookie that almost killed Jin Chow, for He almost killed this nigga. Shit was wild as fuck. Niggas out here hiding the body and shit like they really killed that nigga. Goo House really cool, though. He's a really cool character. Froggy 2 is probably one of my favorite of the secondary characters because of his origin. Before Wong Ling came around and domesticated his ass, uh, he was a whole ass demon lord, like a demon king. He's a huge part of the comedic relief in this show. He's actually pretty good friends with Wong Ling and I like their relationship. And like Wong Ling be treating this nigga like family folk. The whole demon king situation I was talking about earlier where he was like trying to help his people because it was so bad in demon world. Bro, this nigga Wang Ling created a whole new world where his demon friends can live, dog. Like this is I'm telling you, Wang Ling, this show is on this episode of Wang Ling doing whatever the fuck you want. Like that's how this show goes. The rest of the supporting cast is cool too. Everyone serves their purpose, plays their role well, and even if they don't have a lot of screen time. I love the writing in this show, man. I can't talk about it enough. Love the way they handled their characters. Now, let's move on to looks, presentation, and music. I'm not gonna lie, bro. 
for a comedy show, I'm not gonna lie, these fight scenes in this show look really good. You got some pretty like visually pleasing animation in this show. There are a lot of beautiful looking scenes in this show too, man. I don't know what it is, but I'm really a sucker for those like space scenes where the main focus of the shot is looking up at this celestial body in space. I know I just made that sound super complicated, but just look look at your screen and you'll see what I'm talking about. These shots are beautiful to me and I can't get enough of them, I'm not gonna lie. The sound design in this show is pretty satisfying too. Like I said in my summertime rendering video, which you should uh, definitely check out after this, I really appreciate those little impact noises that make me react harder to the actual hit. And there's definitely a couple of really good impact sounds in this shit that make me go, damn, he just makes your shit. Like I love sound effects like that that really make me feel like I got hit. The openings in this show are really good as far as music wise. My favorite one is thousand percent the first one by far. That song is so raw. Like I done listened to that song so many times and I still play it to this day. They have like you know those moments that I talked about, I think it was in my Demon Slayer video, but which you should you should go watch too. It was just in the Demon Slayer video where I said that whenever they play like the beginning opening, the opening song for uh, like a big ass moment in the show. I love those moments, dog. And they got a few of them. They got quite a few of them in this one. Those moments were like a big moment of the show is happening. And they play the intro to make the moment more epic than it already is. Bro, I can't get enough of those shits. Well, they make me so hype. That that first OP is definitely on my on my playlist, thousand percent. The music in this show is really good. All in all, I think this is a very unique show that's very funny, extremely entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. I adore what the authors deal with this show, and I'm super excited to see what they got going on moving forward. If you're looking to laugh and looking to be entertained, this show is a thousand percent for you. Like a million percent for you, my nigga. I'm telling you, you will enjoy this show. I definitely recommend it. Uh, if you watch stuff like Konosuba, I would recommend it. If you watch something like, uh, what's another funny one? I think Jim Taba has a lot of comedy in it. I think you will like this one. Uh, another show that I think is fucking hilarious. Baki's fucking hilarious. I'm sorry. If you watch Baki, I think you would appreciate some of the comedy in this. It's just some ridiculous shit in this show that some you can laugh at and the fight scenes in the show actually look pretty good. Even though it's a slice of life technically. But it doesn't feel like it because I'm always entertained by it. Like it's never a dull moment in this show really for me. And as always, man, have a great day. Peace. And, you know, my touch on <笑>我知道解除之后大家还会不会记得我不错了我并不需要全世界的爱对不起各位我只要一个人的就足够了我是人还是妖王灵<笑> 我能不能接着到你的狗？Yes, I'm a blessed, but I'm blessed to be.